I want to move on to, uh, to verse 18 of chapter 1. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, and who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Now, I, there, there's one thing I'd like to point out there, that ungodliness comes first. If you are ungodly, then that will eventually, that will lead to unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen. That's like invisible attributes, invisible, clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Just because you don't have this, you don't have an excuse. It says that that, that even his or since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. So we have no excuse. In verse 24, this this is it, it was hard to see, for me to see this when I as I was growing in grace. It says, Therefore God gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their heart to dishonor their bodies among themselves. It says God gave them up. Why did God give them up? Because, because we rejected Him. And God is, a, is a, a perfect gentleman. He's going to let us go our own way. He's not going to be comfortable because He's still knocking on the door of your heart. And in verse 26, he says it again. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. Moving on to, uh, and uh, again, in, in verse 28, this is the third time. He says, God gave, this is, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over. So God gave them up to, to their own thinking, to do what they wanted to do. Ungodliness leads to unrighteousness. Now we come to um, chapter 2. It says, Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For whatever you judge, whenever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. That's a hard thing to think about. That when we point our finger, we need to be very careful. But we know that the judgment of God is according to the truth that those who practice such things, the judgment of God. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge by those practicing such things and doing the same thing, that you will escape the judgment of God? Verse 10. But the glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So why is it to the Jew first? It says in verse 25, For circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law. That's his strength. If you keep the law. Is there anyone in here that can keep the law? In Christ. Is the only way. By the way, uh, my uh, sermon is, was given in the in the uh, in the Sabbath school class. If y'all are listening, but there's one word we're going to talk about that, that, that our Sabbath school teacher stayed away from, and I think he did it on purpose because he knew the word that I was going to talk about. Anyway, now this, this verse 28 and 29, it really kind of through me for, for verse 28 of chapter 2 it says for he is not a Jew who is one outwardly and we discussed this in uh, in our Sabbath school nor is circumcision that which is outward, outward but in the flesh but he is a Jew who is one inwardly 
And circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. If you go to Romans chapter 9, there I go past. It's uh, verse 6. It says, But it is not that the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel who are Israel. So, it said in verse 7, Nor are they the children because they are the seed of Abraham. So, it's not those that are genetically the Jewish people who are God's people. It is those who are spiritually God's people. That's who God's people are. And now to our moving to chapter 3. I am going to pick up my reading in verse 9. What then are we? And when Paul says we, he's talking about the Jews, he's talking about himself. Are we better than they? And when he says they, he's talking about the Gentiles, and that's us. He says, are we better than they? And his answer is, not at all, for we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. Verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. I used to read that verse, and it was like... There's not one good person on the face of the earth. You know, and, and what has really got my attention really stands out. If you read Revelation and you see that as the seals were broken, there was only one person that could break this seal. And it was like, one person can break the seal? And, and that, that really it got my attention. And it really brought me to my knees when it says that yeah, the Lamb of God is the only one that could break the seal. Now, I don't want to get into the seals or anything, but I, I just want to say there was, there's only one. And there has never been another human being on planet Earth that could um, say that they were that little without sin. Now, as I read on, it says, uh, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. And that brings me to uh, Revelation 3.20, where it says, I am knocking on the door of your heart. If you open up, I'm going to let you in. I'm, I'm going to come into you. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open tomb where their tongues, they, with their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. My goodness, look around the planet now. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. We look for peace in everything and everywhere where we ought to be looking. We go to the doctor. He gives us a pill to make us feel good. Some go after alcohol. Some go after uh, over-the-counter drugs, illegal drugs, pornography. You name it. That we are we have tried to find our peace in all the wrong places. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That is, that, that is very, you can see that today. You can see it in the church today. There is no fear of God before our eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law. What law is this? God's law. Is this a transcript of his character? Yes. Is this his standard? Yes. <clears throat> to those under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. That word world is, in 
the Greek. Is it the Greek or the Hebrew? The Greek is cosmos. That, and that's, everybody's included in this. Nobody is excluded. As uh, I've, we've been taught in our Sabbath school, you, you either father, you, there's only two powers in this world, and you father one, you follow one of, or the other. Therefore, summarizing today, therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be, will be justified in his sight. It's just what we just said, that no one can keep the law. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Why don't we just get rid of it? I mean, we can just get rid of this law. Good, we can we just throw it out. Well, if we can throw it out, then there would be no knowledge of sin. There would be no mirror to look at and say, hmm. when we look at God's character, which is His law, we, we would not be convicted in our heart. Uh, it, it's a lot deeper than that, folks. I mean, when, when it says that we were made in the image of God, we were made in the image of God. So there's a hunger and a thirst there that we don't even understand sometimes, and we're trying to cover it up with the alcohol or whatever I just mentioned a little while ago. God's mirror is His law. But now, but now, now this is after 4,000 years of sinning. God inspires Paul to write this after 4,000 years, approximately 4,000 years, plus or minus a few. But now, but now, the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This word righteousness, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 5. I, I'm going to hone in on this word righteousness. And it, it's an amazing word that we, we as Adventists should know more about and we don't. This word... It's not humorous at all. It's serious. 
But that word righteousness, and one of the few ways I know how to explain righteousness is take this stool and lean it up against this pulpit like this. Now, that's not right. Can, you can't use that chair like that. If I sit on that chair, I, I, I weigh quite a bit. I won't tell you how much, but I weigh quite a bit. I would crush this chair and it would break and, and be all the pieces. So, what do I got to do? I've got to set it right. Now I can sit on it with no problem. I set this right. Well, the human race, back when Adam and Eve were in the garden, and the adversary, Satan, came and convinced them that God had not given them enough. He says, God is holding something back from you. But we know better. Did God, did God give them enough? Yeah, he gave them everything that they needed. There was nothing that they didn't need. But Satan convinced them. And this is the fellow that convinced in the, in the atmosphere of heaven where all of us want to go, he convinced a third of the angels that God was, was wrong. And now he's, and now he's uh, dealing with Adam and Eve who, by the way, probably had more smarts than any of us would ever even think about. They were perfect. They were pure. They were holy. But they were not righteous because Adam and Eve, before they sinned, did not need to be set right. Adam and Eve did not need to be set right before sin. The holy angels did not need to be set right before sin. They did, there, there are no righteous holy angels. They're holy. They're not righteous. They're holy. The angels of God. God Himself is holy. Now Jesus came to planet earth and what did He invent? Righteousness. He came to planet earth because the human race that's the human race. And he takes the human race and he sets it right. If you don't remember anything, remember that word righteousness is invented by Jesus Christ. When he took on human flesh in incarnation, his mother was Mary, she was a human being. She, he, he, that, the incarnation, he took on human flesh. And I'm not prepared to go into all the details of that, but he became our substitute. Now, back to Romans chapter 3. Now, if, if we get this right, if we get this right, Jesus is knocking on the door of our heart. What is he going to bring? He has already brought this. He's brought this righteousness to the human race. Every human being, for God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son. There, there's two phases of that Roman, of uh, John 3.16. The first phase is God. God did His part. And then man's part was to believe what God did. And if we believe what God did, then Jesus will impart His righteousness to, to each one of us. And if that righteousness is imparted to us, we have... And we talked about this in Sabbath school. We have the free gift of salvation already. It was a gift. It was given to us. It's not uh, an offer. It's a gift. And uh, if we accept this gift, then we are ready for what... I, I want to finish this just right. When Jesus imparts his righteousness to us, let's go to uh, 1 John. <laughs> and this is where I'm going to close. 1 John, well, this is the fastest sermon I've ever had. <laughs> and that's all right. 1 John chapter 3. Now, get this. When I'm in my own strength that we read in, in Romans chapter 3, we were, we were lost. 
Everything I said before we got this righteousness, we were lost in our sins. Okay, now, in, in uh, verse 6 of 1 John chapter 3, it says, Whoever abides in Him does not sin. Now, I, these are not my words. These are the words. Right, do we believe this is inspired? Yes. <laughs> verse 9, it says, Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Folks, when this church and the generation that God is going to seal with his righteousness, We're being ready for translation. Our closing song is number 75.